Welcome back. We're talking with Dwayne Hicks, the head women's lacrosse coach at the University of Detroit Mercy, coming off a, a kind of a tough day, but uh, a tough loss against Central Michigan at home. But before we start with the actual game, you had senior day and you had a uh, chance to honor some of the kids that have been in your program in your yes. second year now at UDM as the women's coach. Uh, talk a little bit about your seniors and what they've meant to the program. Well, we uh, Saturday was senior day, so we graduated uh, – or we will be graduating nine seniors who uh, that's, if you don't know, that's like the largest class we've ever had here at Detroit Mercy. So I'm very proud of the the, the young ladies who, who stayed and got it done. You know, yesterday we had our, we had our, our senior send off and I said, you know, I was trying to think of a word that would kind of, capture the moment and the group and uh, of all the words I could come up with it had to be the best one that I thought fit for them was historic they are a historic group what they had to go through and endure and overcome and persevere against with COVID and and everything else over the last four years has just been historic we we will knock on wood, never, ever have to experience this again. So um, it's just, I'm impressed with them. I mean, you've got one girl in there who's who's probably one of the best students here at UDM, a 4.0. She's going on to do, she got her MBA in four years, and she's going to be in uh, the C-suite at, you know, one of the, the major banks here. So you know, we those are the kind of kids we produce, and and you know, pre med, dentists, pre law, they're an amazing group, and uh, I know they'll do well in the world. The term historic is interesting. Uh, it's a it's a pretty wide landscape, and that's a, a wonderful word to use in honoring uh, in honoring those kids because that's uh, they they spent a lot of time at the school and the university, put a lot in the program, and I'm sure they meant a lot to you. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I remember they were freshmen uh, when I took over the program four years ago. And I remember I came in, took over, said, hey, I'm going to be the coach. A week later, we were on a bus trip to New York to play Manhattan. And uh, we did the 10 days. We came back. We're getting off the bus. And I get a call that says, hey, there's this cold going around that uh, we're not really sure what it is, but we're going to have to shut things down for two weeks. We'll, we'll see you got send everyone home. It'll be two weeks. Just move, push the games back two weeks, and we'll be back, get everybody, get back in. Two years later. Driving back from, two years later. Driving back from an MCLA game coming out of Ohio back to uh, Detroit. We got the phone call from the athletic director saying that the uh, club program, which was the first weekend we'd played, that was it. Close it up. You, know, you move on from there. So it is what it is. Yeah. So that's, I thought it was two weeks. Yep. And then two weeks turned into two years. Yep. So I yep. said, you, you come back the next year in fall ball and you're, you're standing in a three foot square for three months. You can't move out of the square. Right. You've got to pass the ball for, two months inside of a square. So I, I said it's, it was historic. And I said in 30 years, when you're, when your kids are asking you, Hey, what, what happened during this pandemic thing? What, what were you doing? You know, I was playing lacrosse at, at Detroit mercy and this is what we had to do and what's what was going on. And like I said, it's unprecedented and they did an amazing job. Okay. Well, congratulations to them. Now we need to bring it up to date. You come on the, you play Youngstown on the road uh, coming up this coming Saturday, if not mistaken. Yes, yes, we are. Let's talk a little bit about last week's uh, loss at home, to Central Michigan. You had a thirteen-eight game the first time, five, five point difference. You got a little bit shell shocked uh, against Central with twenty to eight. Uh, can you compare the two games and and, and maybe are, you know, 
is, is Central gotten better or is it just one of those days? Maybe explain that a little bit. Well, I think a lot of it came down to, you know, I, I know I've said this a few other times, but a lot of it came down to the draw controls. We could not win a draw control. We had, uh, we, we looked at it and analyzed in the film. It came down to uh, a 22, they, they won 22 draws. We won six. Of the six we won, we gave up the ball immediately to, on two of them. So basically they won 24 draws. We won six. It's very hard to win a lacrosse game 24-6. Dwayne, if you're looking at, obviously the scoreboard is the ultimate test. You have to score more goals than them. But is there a stat that when you win, you look at and say, okay. And is there a stat when you lose, you kind of point to and go, oh, my gosh. Is there is there something usually key to you that you know what you look at in a stat sheet that maybe you know that maybe why you lost? Uh, I, I think part of it is – Ground balls uh, in, in the women's game, it's uh, free possession shots. Um, and, you know, a lot of it is also is your goalie making good saves. Uh, uh, that tells you an idea of, of what your defense is like. That, but there really is no single stat. It's just uh, the, you you look at effort on the field. And, you know, I, I think uh, – you know, got to give Central a lot of credit. They were flying. They were, they have very athletic girls who were just flying around the field on every single ground ball, smothering defense. And it, it was tough to run an offense against them. And for us, we were, it, it wasn't that we were overwhelmed. We were just, it just wasn't our day. And as I told them, Hopefully, we'll get a chance to play him again in the playoffs. As this question last week of men's coach Chris Collin, do you feel pressure to win at UD? Is there pressure to win? Do you feel pressure to win? No, I feel I feel there's more of a pressure to perform. Uh, put a good product out on the field, and I, I think we're I think we've got a good product out on the field. I, you know, again, it's, uh, you know, the score is 20 to eight, but it was a good game. Um, we, we had fun. I think, uh, we played the entire game. We scored with three seconds left to go in the game. And that's how hard we were playing. There, there was no giving up. And that's, that's really all you can ask a, a team to do. We mentioned briefly statistics and huddle, which is now a program used by almost every sport, and huddle assist, yep. which now does statistics for every sport. Coaches obviously look at analytics with a great and a very keen eye. You think players do? Minus, uh, let me let me ask this question: minus their own personal stats of goals and assists. I think they do because I think that gives you the characteristic of a team. Okay, I know we do. So if I if I see a team that has forty goals and five assists, I, I I know what kind of team that is. Right. If I see a team that's got twenty goals and twenty assists, okay, and I and I only see three girls who've scored ninety percent of their goals, well, I, I you can put two and two together. So <clears throat> I think the the analytics help you, but then again. Anybody could have a day, so you gotta you gotta you know scout everybody and be prepared. But it does certainly help you uh, give an idea of who you're going to be facing and what kind of offense they're going to be running at you. I have a brand new freshman who says that we have one of the best man up units in high school, and we're six goals for forty one attempts. I'm trying to point out to him that's not exactly the numbers you want for he's got a, a very he's a freshman, so he's got a bit of a warped view for analytics, at least in this number. And when you yeah. point out to him the number should be much higher than whatever it is, um he just kind of looks at you and hopefully you'll have a better understanding by the time he's a sophomore. So sometimes yeah. sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. I, I understand that part. So y- Youngstown coming up, take a trip down to uh Youngstown, Ohio. And uh, just talk briefly Absolutely. about the about the game down there. Well, I, I 
I think this is going to be a, this is going to be a key game for us. Um, Youngstown, right now you've got five or six teams fighting for the four spots in the MAC. Uh, Youngstown, uh, Detroit Mercy, and then uh, you throw in a little bit of Eastern Michigan in there. And, and somebody's fighting it out for who's going to be number four, uh, number three, four, five. So every game counts, and this is going to be a big one. So um, we're, we're going in guns loaded and trying to have the best game we can have. Youngstown has so, had some interesting and some wonderful uh, gains in, in the athletic department. Jim Trussell, the old Ohio State football coach, is now president. He's done a really good job of uh, making that uh, university relevant in the world of NCAA uh, sports. I think they've done a terrific job. Well, you got great facilities. I mean, it's uh, we've been down there before. Uh, you know, the lacrosse team actually plays inside. They 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 use the inside field with the track when uh, when they have bad weather and outdoor for it. I mean, that's awesome that they have the facilities and. They're getting the players that they get. And like I said, it's always a good matchup against us. Yeah. So he's doing well down there. Well, good. We appreciate your time. We hope uh, luck comes this weekend with uh, a trip uh, south to Ohio. And uh, we'll, yes. check in with, we'll check in with you uh, next week. Sounds good. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg.